Why make a microcosm? There are a lot of reasons I can think of. They're all kind of my reasons, of course. But maybe if I tell you them, they will make you want to try to make one yourself. I'm not, I don't know. Firstly, it's easy. It's a lot easier than it seems. It's the kind of thing where it can be as easy as you want it to be. Or if you choose, you can get as precise and as complicated and as in-depth with the ecology as you choose to do. It all depends on what you feel like doing. For me, I like going really in-depth. Uh, it is a challenge and it's fun to learn about that kind of stuff and applying what you learn. It's a cool science experiment too. You make a ecosystem and you watch it and you observe it and you watch the changes that occur and it is science happening right before your eyes. It's, it's the ecology of life on earth in a miniature form kind of evolving on your desktop or your windowsill or wherever you decide to place it. Uh, they're also pretty inexpensive to, to make. You can get a jar very cheaply, some kind of container that is, if you wanted to seal it or open it, doesn't matter. They're pretty inexpensive all the way around. The plants you can get in nature if you wanted to at, at a lake or you can buy them at a local fish store. They're not that expensive either. Then you have soil, which you can use from nature. So if you wanted to, you, it could really be an inexpensive hobby to do. Uh, or you can spend a little bit of money, but I don't think it, it's ever going to be an expensive hobby. Um, there's, there's also a lot of possibilities uh, for your imagination to, uh, to really kind of go wild. You know, you can choose all kinds of different jars to make your ecosystem out of. It can be open, it can be closed, it can be a freshwater ecosystem, it can be a wetland stream ecosystem, and they're all going to be different. You could make actually two lake freshwater ecosystems and they will um, develop and self-organize and self-balance themselves in a different way. And you'll be able to watch these changes occur and and they will be unique to, to its own ecosystem, to its own closed ecological system, because each one is very unique and very different. None of them will be exactly the same. Uh, you'll also learn about ecology when you build these things. You have to. You know, you have to know a little bit. You'll find yourself Googling stuff, and you'll, you'll learn more. You'll, you'll, uh, that'll expand your horizons. You'll be able to have more successful bio jars and more successful ecosystems, and it'll just keep you on that track where you just keep getting deeper and deeper and deeper into it, making better and better and better uh, ecosystems until you know you, you're kind of a master at it. So sort of, you know, these you can never be. I guess you can never be a master at this kind of thing. It's, it's I suppose. Um, like I said, you could you could watch you watch your ecosystem change. There's something called su succession, and it's the way that the organ the this ecosystem will self organize and self balance itself, and it goes through this period and then it reaches a stable state or kind of an e a uh, uh, not not an equilibrium. That's not the right right term, but a stable state where it's more stabilized after things have. Um, you know, worked itself out and they've figured out how things are going to operate inside the the ecosystem. It's kind of special and unique and and deserving of its own video, so I'm not going to go into that too much. And lastly, it's just a really unique thing to do. You, you know, um, not a lot of people are into this kind of thing. And if you make a miniature ecosystem that is contained in a jar people tend to be impressed with that they they think it's really cool and at least that's what i found and when i show people my ecosystems they lot not a lot of them but i have had you know plenty of offers of people who want to buy them because they think they're so cool so yeah it makes a good talking uh point or a good decorative piece because it's also a form of art, you know, you can make it very pretty if you wanted to, or you can make it just a pure science thing and scoop up some stuff from a lake. Uh, the possibilities, there's, there's a lot of possibilities.
So yeah, those are the reasons why I think you should try making your own microcosm. Um, decide what you want to do, what your your goal is at the end, what you the end result you want to be, and just kind of get a jar, go out to a lake, maybe a pet store, look up some information, and, and spend a day and just just see what happens. And then that's the experiment right there. Close it up and, and watch things change. More videos will come. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you in the next video.